We're here to help. We're Brown Funeral Home in Martinsburg, Inwood, and Charlestown, Ranson. We're here when you need us. We have the tools. We have the talent. It's Miller time. It's Miller time on Talk Radio WRNR. A look at local sports with the play-by-play voice of local sports, Matt Miller. And a very happy first day of August to all the listeners out there. Matt Crawford here with you in studio. Matt Miller out on a little vacation type thing. Vacation Bible school with his church for the rest of the week. So I will be taking you through the rest of this week. We will both be back, not in studio next week. We will be live from the Berkeley County Youth Fair. We will both be back for Miller Time next week. So again, make sure you tune in next week as we will have a special Miller Time week as we will be live from the Berkeley County Youth Fair. Well, we got a lot to talk about tonight, but we have to start with history and the Washington Nationals last night. Now, I'm going to start this by saying I still do not believe that the Nationals are going to be a playoff team. But they did win two games since the last time we talked, and they're now back over the 500 mark at 54 and 53. And they did win last night in historic fashion. It was a phenomenal offensive game for the Washington Nationals. 25 runs. They beat the Mets 25-4 to on 26 hits. That is a Washington baseball team record that goes back all the way to before they were the... The Senators obviously had records that there were close to this in hits. Still a Washington baseball record in runs. But the Senators did have more hits and did, did win by a larger margin of victory. But dating all the way back to this franchise and they were the Expos, they broke records last night with runs, hits, and margin of victory. Again, 25 hits or 26 hits, 25 runs, and a 21 run margin of victory. This was the final call as heard right here last night on Talk Radio WRNR. And Charlie Slows will give you all the details. Kelly delivers, swing at a slow bouncer left side. Mark Reynolds has it on the run. The throw across to Zimmerman and a curly W's in the books. The Nationals take game one of this two-game set with the Mets. In their first game after the trade deadline passes and not a whole lot happened, the Nationals stormed out of the gate and just blistered Mets pitching here tonight. Seven in the first, three in the second, three in the third, three in the fourth, three in the fifth. At that point, the Nationals led by the score of 19 to nothing. They would add six runs late in the bottom of the eighth inning on the way to a 25-4 to win here tonight at Nationals Park. Still just kind of hard to grasp scoring 25 runs in a game. Before we get to the individual stats, let's just talk about the number 25 when it comes to runs. In the National League, that now has them tied with the New York Mets, the Brooklyn Dodgers back in the National League. And th- those were back in the early 1900s. So I guess it wasn't even the Mets at that point. Looking back at this date, it was 1901. So looking at the New York Giants that set that record at 25 runs in a game. The National League, League record is held by the St. Louis Cardinals. Or it may have even back then have been the St. Louis Browns at 28 runs. And the overall record for runs scored in the game. Regionally, I'm sure a lot of people remember this game. And I'm sure our own. Matt Miller remembers this game quite well. It was when the Texas Rangers beat the Baltimore Orioles back in 2007. That was that 30-run game the Texas Rangers put up on the Baltimore Orioles. And I remember watching that game and just thinking, wow, I can't imagine how that will ever be topped. But looking at this list, it is kind of funny because they beat the Boston Red Sox by only one run when looking at records like that. But National League-wise, the Nationals are now up there. That They're tied with the New York Giants and with the – Dodgers when it comes to games that they've scored 25 runs. Again, just a miraculous game last night for the Washington Nationals, and everybody came to play. I mean, you look at some of the stats, and you look at the box score. Trey Turner in the leadoff spot, he went four for five. or he, I'm sorry, he went four for six, ended up scoring three runs. Anthony Rendon had himself a whale of a game. He scored twice, drove in four, went three for six. Bryce Harper went two for four. He drove in two, scored three himself. Ron Zimmerman had a home run, went two for five, scored twice, 
drove in three. Uh, I think the player of the game, it was nice to see him swing the bat like this. Daniel Murphy, three for four, scored three himself, drove in six. And that is a game that those stats for Daniel Murphy, we haven't seen from Daniel Murphy in definitely nothing close this year. Maybe a little bit last year, but that's the kind of numbers you would like to see from Daniel Murphy on a consistent basis, at least going three for four. Obviously, the six RBIs aren't going to come too often, but even looking at Tanner Roark, he he started on the mound first, and he's had back-to-back starts on the mound that have just been superb. But at the plate, Tanner Roark, you, you know it's a good game when your starting pitcher goes two for five, scores twice, and drives in three. Tanner Roark was third yesterday when it came to RBIs with three. Daniel Murphy had six, which led the team. Anthony Rendon had four. But then your starting pitcher, Tanner Roark, drove in three. That's just the kind of game it was yesterday. Just an absolute whale of a game for the Washington Nationals. They went to the plate 50 times. Think about that. 50 plate appearances in one game. That's unheard of. That's insane. They went 26 for 50 and over 500 batting average for the team in yesterday's game, which you would obviously expect to happen when you score 25 runs, but just an absolute gem. We're talking about Tanner Roark on the mound yesterday, seven innings pitched, one earned run, only gave up four hits, and struck out seven. That's coming after his last start, which was a scoreless eight-inning affair in which he struck out 11 and only gave up three hits. So it would be nice if Tanner Roark could keep that consistency up. As Again, I, I'm not sure you can – jump on the Nats are going to the playoff bandwagon quite yet. I still think that, number one, I don't know about the consistency of this team. I still think it's just not there. But also you have the Phillies. So it's not just like you're you're neck and neck with the Phillies right now. Not only do you have to win games for the Nationals in the East, but you also have to hope that the Phillies somehow hit a road bump and they beat the best team in baseball last night in the Boston Red Sox. So it's going to be very, very hard for the Washington Nationals to make up this ground because they just fell in a hole that was too big right now, I think. Again, crazier things have happened in sports, but right now, uh, while that is an amazing game for the Washington Nationals, it's one of those games that's going to go down in the history books for baseball, not just the Washington Nationals. Uh, I still just think that they have dug themselves too big of a hole, and you're looking at a team that went 20-7 and in the month of May. 13 games over 500, but since then have not had a month where they were even close to getting to that 500 mark. But they are 1-0 now in August. And after that game last night, I'm thinking this was something along the lines of what Davey Martinez needed to say to his team to make sure they knew that they had to keep on winning. All right, you guys, let's listen up. We won a game yesterday. And if we win one today, that's two in a row. We win one tomorrow, that's called a winning streak. It has happened before. Not recently for the Washington Nationals. I love that quote from the movie Major League. But they need to start putting together winning streaks, playing consistently. They need to go back to the way they were playing when they won 13 out of 15 in the month of May and had that 20-7 and seven record. If they're going to have any shot of possibly getting to a point where they're even battling for a playoff spot. And the tough thing for the Nationals right now is that they're five games back in the wild card and five games back in the division as well. So that they're either going to win the division, most likely, or not make the playoffs at all. Unfortunately, there's other teams in the majors this year and in the National League that are just playing at that high of a level that they're going to need to win the East. And they're going to need the Philadelphia Phillies to hit a major speed bump. And I don't see any signs of that happening. Again, they beat the best team in baseball last night, beating the Boston Red Sox. So just a a phenomenal win for the Nationals last night. And then they come out today and again beat the Mets. They beat them 5-3. to three. Not nearly as flashy of a game, but if you're going to start to put together some sort of a streak, you got to start with a couple games. They beat the Mets today 5-3, to three, improving their record. 254 and 53. They will start a series tomorrow, a four game series at home against the Cincinnati Reds. We will not have that game for you tomorrow night. We will have NFL football. Yes, it is that time of year being the first of August. 
today. The 2nd of August is the first game of the NFL preseason. That'll be the Hall of Fame game that'll feature the Chicago Bears and Baltimore Ravens from Canton, Ohio, the first preseason game of the entire season. And some local interest, obviously people are going to get excited because it's the first official football game of the year. But another reason to get excited tomorrow is the local interest in this game. On the Ravens' side, you have Miles Humphrey. Was an intern here. Was a Shepard Rams, the Shepard Rams' all-time sack leader. And on the other side is his defensive line mate, E.J. Norris. He got picked up by the Chicago Bears. So he, I, we have a lot of Ravens fans in this area, so that's drawing attention. We have Shepard fans that are going to be looking to see what Miles Humphrey does to the Ravens. And, oh, wait, let's look at the other side in the Chicago Bears. And I know our uh, our traffic coordinator, Sherry Dieter Davis, is a Chicago Bears fan, but not a whole lot of Chicago Bears fans in this area. You're looking at E.J. Norris, who is now going to draw some attention from this area, just following the Shepard Rams in the NFL. So definitely a game tomorrow night that in this area, well, you may not think the, the Bears and Ravens would draw a ton of interest. I think it's going to draw more interest than you think, especially since it's a preseason game. And that's when those undrafted free agents or those late round picks are going to play the most anyway. So definitely should be a game that you try to catch tomorrow night and watch some local Shepard Ram talents play in the NFL for the very first time. All right, we got to get in our first break. When we come back, we will talk some Hagerstown Suns baseball they, as they played at 10 o'clock this morning. Off early to be playing professional baseball, but we caught up with Hagerstown Suns play-by-play man Sean Mernon as we do every week. And we will play you that conversation next on Miller Time. There's this funny correlation between the size of a gift for a woman and her excitement level. Oh, she gets excited if you get her a gift, any gift. It's exciting to get a present. But compare her excitement over a big box that has, say, a new closet organizer system in it to a little, really little box from Bechtel Jewelers. Big box with big items in it. Little box with something very little and tiny and sparkly in it. Big box with practical stuff, which is good for sure. Who doesn't want a new blender or espresso machine? Little box with fine jewelry in it. Maybe new earrings, a diamond pendant. All kinds of things fit in that little box. Big box, little box. Which one gets her more excited? The simple truth is, the littler the box, the bigger her excitement. I'm Lori from Bechtel Jewelers. We are the little box store. We have the little boxes that bring on the majorly big excitement. For the gift that excites her and delights and say love so clearly, come see us. I'm Ari Wolf with the NFL Network now on the Westwood One Radio Network. Stephon Diggs will now have a chance to make more Minneapolis miracles. The Vikings wideout signed a five-year extension with the team Tuesday, worth $72 million. The contract news not as good for Raiders holdout Khalil Mack. NFL Network insider Ian Rappaport reports the team and their all-pro defensive end have not been in contact on a new contract since February. Elsewhere, Seahawks wideout Doug Baldwin will be kept out of training camp practices for a few weeks. The Pro Bowl are dealing with some soreness in his knee. Seattle defensive end Deion Jordan will also miss a week or two after suffering a stress reaction in his shin. Jalen Ramsey made his training camp debut Tuesday. The Jaguars all-pro corner had been out following the birth of his first child, a baby girl. And the Saints adding a couple of veterans to the roster, signing former Packers offensive lineman John Barclay and ex-Cardinal Patriot and Viking receiver Michael Floyd. This has been NFL Network Now on the Westwood One Radio Network. Napa know-how. Right now, Napa Legend batteries come with a $15 rebate by mail. Their long-lasting durability stands up to extreme conditions. So even on scorching days, it'll puff its chest out and be all like, hey, summer heat. Find another car battery to drain. Napa Legend Batteries with $15 mail-in rebate. Quality parts, helpful people. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how. At participating Napa Auto Parts stores. Offer expires 831-18. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, please call this toll-free number right now. 800-390-9528. That's 800-390-9528. By calling your addiction team, you're taking the first steps to recovery. The help you need could be one call away. 800-390-9528. Make the free call now. 800-390-9528. Your addiction team is a third-party advertiser for various treatment centers and placement networks. Individual results will vary. Visit youraddictionteam.com forward slash terms for more information. 
Are you looking for a full-service web design company right here in the Eastern Panhandle? Then look no further than Pro Design LLC, specializing in web design and development, web hosting, and application development. Pro Design is a locally owned company serving local clients since 1997 with a reputation of quality, creativity, and personal touch. Let Pro Design build or redesign your dream website. Find them online at professionaldesign.com or phone 304-676-9940. Since 1877, Farmers and Mechanics Insurance Companies have proudly supported our local community. Farmers and Mechanics has the insurance products to meet your needs, including home, auto, farm, dwelling fire, business owners, and umbrella coverage. Please contact your local independent agency for a review of your insurance needs and ask for a policy from the company that knows you best. Farmers and Mechanics Insurance Companies, just off Edwin Miller Boulevard on Administrative Drive in Martinsburg. FMIWV.com. Simply free e-checking from City National Bank. Perfect if you want basic checking with no monthly service fees or balance requirements. Stop by any of our seven Eastern Panhandle locations or visit us online at bankatcity.com. City National Bank. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. And welcome back into Miller Time. Fred Flintstone here without Barney Rubble. Matt Crawford in studio. Matt Miller out for the rest of the week, but we will be back in action together next week live from the Berkeley County Youth Fair. So make sure you tune into that. Should be some some fun times and interesting interviews from out at the Youth Fair. Well, we're going to talk some Hagerstown Suns baseball. They played early this morning, a 10-30 first pitch. They went on a walk-off in 10 innings, beating Lexington 2-1. to one. And we got a chance earlier, earlier to catch up with Hagerstown Suns play-by-play man Sean Mernon as we do every week. And we got it started with just how the Suns have been doing and starting with today's game. It has been crazy. Um, it, it's it, Today, you know, our, our GM, Travis Banner, said it perfectly. Between trying to get this game in this morning at 1030 and on top of that, knowing that there was rain coming and we also had a shipment that came in uh, for some promotional items and things like that that we needed to unload. It, things couldn't have worked out better outside of it just not raining and, and instead being sunny all day. You know, it, they, they start off, they go 10 innings earlier today. They, they get a walk-off win, 2-1 to one in the last game of the series against Lexington, which they won, you know, they won the series two games to one. And then, you know, not not long after that, we had just enough time where uh, our AGM, Brian Sadler, he's the head groundskeeper, he and Mark Rabideau, who, who's his assistant, to get things taken care of on the field so that we could put the tarp on for that downpour that came through. Um, it, it's kind of been weird because the forecast the night before have uh, have oftentimes said that, that the rain was going to start anywhere from an hour to three hours before first pitch and you wake up the next day and all of a sudden it's pushed back and today it was like hey we might be able to get five innings in and all of a sudden we played 10 innings and still had time to do all that stuff and not get caught out in the rain so it's been a wild week or so the trade deadline in major league baseball came and went yesterday the nationals didn't make a whole lot of moves they did trade brandon kinsler so i assume nobody at hagerstown is really going to move up or down or go anywhere yeah yeah, as far as I know, that's a, that's a pretty accurate statement there. Uh, we did get one guy from Potomac. He got sent down. Uh, that's Jorge Pantoa, who pitched today. Um, he's a right-handed reliever. He, he's been here for the two previous years uh, in bits and pieces and, and actually been pretty effective, but he's been uh, his ERA has spiked a little bit uh, with Potomac this year, so they, they sent him back here. Um, and then Connor Zwetch, uh, another right-hander that was in our bullpen, ended up going on the DL today. So that's really the only uh, the only roster movement that we've seen. That reliever that they picked up in that cancer trade that I don't know where he's going to end up but uh, I believe he was with Myrtle Beach the Myrtle Beach Pelicans which are the high A affiliate um, for the Cubs so uh, if if that transfers over, then he would end up in Potomac. If not, I mean, he could end up anywhere between here and Harrisburg, you would think. So um, as far as we know, that's the only thing that's happened is the uh, the Pantella thing. He got sent down to us. That group of guys have won four games since we talked last. Is it just the team playing better as a whole at this point in the season, or are there individual guys that are stepping up? It's it's really been a strange stretch here right? because what, what ended up happening was, um, you know, you and I talked right before we, we went out to Lakewood and uh, – uh, we they, they had swept this doubleheader against Delmarva, and it was a, we were actually talking before that game or that doubleheader, and uh, they went on swept the, the, the doubleheader against Delmarva, and then went out to Lakewood and lost three heartbreakers. I mean, the first night they gave up a seven run lead, they're up eight to one, and uh, Lakewood scored five runs in the eighth inning, took that game ten to eight, and then the next day they lost on a walk off in the ninth inning, a walk off single, and I believe that score. Uh, 
that one was two to one, I think, or three to two. And then the next day had a, had a lead going into the ninth inning. And Simone Muziati, who's an outfielder for the Lakewood Blue Claws, hit a walk off three run homer. It was his first professional home run. He's been a pro for more than one year. Um, I mean, I, 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 I flat out said Muziati is the type of guy that bunts to make money. I mean, he's, he's that fast and, and that good with the bat. And he just he hit a ball over the fence in right field, and that was how the Suns ended up leaving that series. They they lost three straight nights with leads going into the eighth inning. So um, it, it was good to see them turn things around the other night and be able to to win a close game. Um, and then you know obviously to obviously today they just they ended up you know getting into that tenth inning and they, you get a runner on second base and they moved him up and then, and then brought him in. It was an error that won the game today, but um, it, it's been a weird stretch of games for these guys where especially the starters have pitched really really well. Now, how is that new rule that you just mentioned in extra innings and that is being implemented at the minor league level where a runner is put on second? How has the team reacted to that new rule that started this year? I don't think that it's really necessarily been a reaction. I think it's it's changed things uh, more on the game planning side than anything else because a lot of times what what I've seen um, so far this season is that these teams come up to the plate and you know obviously they're putting they're putting the, the last hitter out or the last the last guy before how can I explain this? So the first hitter of the inning is, is the natural part of the order, right? And so the guy before him in the lineup is going to be the guy that goes out and stands on second base. I'm calling him the designated runner right now. There's no, uh, I don't think there's any official verbiage as far as that's concerned. And what I'm seeing a lot of teams doing is just sacrificing that guy over straight away. So the first guy up is trying to lay down a bunt just to put him over to third base. And I mean, that that's had some success uh, today. It didn't work out that well for, uh, Lexington, they tried. They tried to do that. And what ended up happening was the guy pulled back the bunt, and the base runner was still on his way to third. And so, what ended up happening was Alex Flores, who ended up putting the ball in play, that ended up winning the game in the next half inning, um, threw down to third base and threw the guy out. So there was one out as a strike him out, throw him out, double play. I think, and, and it just didn't work out well in that instance. But um, I mean, overall, as far as front offices go, I think front offices like it because. You're not there until, you know, you're not there for, for 14, 15, 16 inning games. Uh, the, I think the things have worked out favorably, especially for the front offices. And I think it spices up the game a little bit. It adds a new, uh, a new dimension to it at this level. The sun's still at home for a couple of days. What does the schedule look like coming up for Hagerstown? We got Hickory in for four days uh, next up. So, um, you know, they're going to, uh, we don't know what the starters are for them. We know Jackson Tatro is going to throw. Uh, tomorrow on Thursday for a 7.05 start. That's Thursday, Thursday out here at the ballpark. And it's, uh, I mean, Hickory's going to be here for four. And then, um, you know, you get a little bit of time away, I guess, because it's a seven-game homestand. We have a lot of games coming up here. So um, it, it's going to be a little bit wild. But, yeah, so Hickory will be here for four. And then the team goes and gets an off day. They go on the road. They play Augusta for three, Charleston, South Carolina for four. They get another off day. And then they come back. Uh, and Lexington's back in town. <laughs> so it's uh, they still have two more series, believe it or not, against Lexington, even though that the season series against divisional opponents like Greensboro and Lakewood and Delmarva, those are all wrapped up. And we're just kind of getting into the thick of things. We're halfway done with Lexington. So um, it, it's going to be interesting. And, and, you know, I urge fans that are interested in anything going on at the ballpark, always make sure that you go to HagerstownSuns.com. Um, if you click on the schedule, you can see all the promotions that are coming up, including bobbleheads and things like that. That's part of the promotional items that we got we got in, um, which should be given away over the next couple of weeks. And you can always go on to Twitter and follow us at Hagerstown Suns or our Facebook page. Uh, and we're always posting stuff, trying to keep people up to date on that. And you can even get some sneak peeks at some of the promotional items that we give away. So that's kind of what what's coming up on our plate here. Well, Sean, we appreciate the time and look forward to talking to you next week and hopefully after some more Suns wins. Yeah, hopefully we just get more Sun, period. I mean, that would be that would be really helpful, but I think some wins would go a long way, too. Sean Mernon, the voice of the Hagerstown Suns, joining us as he does every week. we got to get in our bottom-of-the-hour break. News, weather, and NBC Sports update. We'll be back with more Miller time after this. 
CBS News update. His tweets are his opinions. That's word from White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders after President Trump calls on Attorney General Jeff Sessions to shut down the Russia probe. Uh, it's not an order. It's the president's opinion. And it's ridiculous that all of the corruption and dishonesty that's gone on with the launching of uh, the witch hunt, the president wants to, has watched this process play out. Republican Senator Susan Collins of Maine. The president's tweet is unfortunate. I think it's inappropriate for him to be commenting on an ongoing investigation. There are questions about whether Mr. Trump's frequent use of Twitter might be used to build a case of obstruction of justice against him. Jordan Fabian is White House reporter for The Hill. The New York Times reported a week or two ago that Robert Mueller's team is looking at President Trump's tweets about Jeff Sessions and the fired FBI director, James Comey, in trying to put together an obstruction case. CBS News update. I'm Matt Piper. Now, with your local forecast, weatherman Bob Kukin. Gradually dissipating showers in the eastern panhandle weather forecast for this evening and the late night, just mostly cloudy. Warm and humid with lows of only 70 degrees. Coming up for the daytime tomorrow, cloudy skies, more showers and thunder showers, especially afternoon and the evening. And again, a few may contain some heavy downpours. We look for high temperatures in the lower 80s. Friday, some more showers. I'm Bob Kukin, Talk Radio WRNR. L.A. Roberts is Berkeley County's oldest jeweler, where every season is new and exciting. In fact, new is old school to us, and though it's nothing new, our old traditions like exceptional service, quality, and value maintain L.A. Roberts Jewelers as the old master among so many new kids on the block. Whether you are a newcomer or part of the old guard, entrust all your fine jewelry needs to L.A. Roberts, old world jewelers for a new age in historic downtown Martinsburg. Come to Valley Guns 2 in Inwood for Smith and Wesson handguns like the MP2.0 9mm full-size semi-automatic and the MP2.0 compact. Or check out the Model 60 Pro Series Smith & Wesson revolver. For the ladies, there's the Smith & Wesson 380 Shield Easy. It's easy to load, easy to shoot, and easy to carry. See the full line of Smith & Wesson handguns at Valley Guns 2, Exit 5, off I-81, Inwood, West Virginia. Online at valleyguns2.com. Your NBC Sports Radio update starts now. Now we await to see what happened in Ohio State. What we've learned today is that Urban Meyer, the head football coach, may have had more knowledge about the now-fired wide receiver coach Zach Smith than he had said there were allegations of domestic violence against Smith. He has been fired. On the NFL gridiron, Jake Ryan, Packers linebacker, done for the season has a torn ACL, Josh Doxson for the Redskins, an AC sprain or even a shoulder bruise. Uh, he might miss some time. 12 games in the majors. Nationals beat the Mets 5-3. to three. Orioles top the Yankees 7-5. to five. Sonny Gray did not have it going. Seven earned in just two and two-thirds. Indians, they shut out the Twins 2 to nothing. Carlos Carrasco win number 13. And the Tigers over the Reds 7-4. to four. I'm Keith Irizarry, and this is NBC Sports Radio. The youth of Berkeley County invite you to the 71st Annual Youth Fair, Saturday, August the 4th through Sunday, August the 11th at Harry Shelley Park. Highlights include live music at the amphitheater starting Monday, August the 6th with country music artist Josh Phillips. Tuesday, August the 7th, the artist is Morgan White. When I'm sad and lonely. And on Wednesday, August the 8th, it's Chris Woodward and the Shindigan. Support our young people at this year's Youth Fair. See the full schedule of events at berkeleycountyyouthfair.org. WVU Medicine is committed to recruiting highly qualified medical professionals and is pleased to introduce several new providers who've joined our medical staffs at Brooklyn Medical Center and Jefferson Medical Center. Dr. Farnaz Hushman, Pulmonology, Dr. Craig Clark, Orthopedics, Dr. Jeffrey Bowman, Obstetrics and Gynecology, Dr. Kevin Hibbett, General Surgery, Dr. Sam Lanko, Hematology, Oncology, Dr. Consuela Crudimparum, Obstetrics and Gynecology, and Dr. Apoor Prasad, Neurology. WVU Medicine, growing to meet the needs of our community. And we're welcome back into Miller time on this actually sunny Wednesday evening, the first day of August. Crazy to believe that August is here and it, this summer has just flown by and crazy to think that tomorrow night right here, you can hear the first game of NFL action of the 2018 season. It may be preseason, but it's still game action as the Baltimore Ravens take on the Chicago Bears 
in the Hall of Fame game. You can hear that through Westwood One right here with a 7.30 pregame, 8 o'clock kickoff. Again, some local interest with Miles Humphrey, of she- formerly of Shepard, on the Ravens side of the football, and EJ Norris, formerly of Shepard, on the Bears side of the football. So make sure you tune in to hear what some local guys are doing at the next level. Also, local news that came out a couple days ago in regards to Shepard. Chenille Jenkins, who has bounced around like a pinball from team to team. He's been with the Seahawks, the Cowboys, the Broncos, has landed a spot with the New York Jets during training camp. And he succeeded last year when it came to the Dallas Cowboys, when he got a shot with the Dallas Cowboys, but unfortunately got injured. And it's hard to keep a guy who gets injured who is a undrafted free agent. So hopefully he can make the best of what he does for the Jets. All right, bottom of the hour, or following the bottom of the hour breaks, you know what that means. It is time for us to take a look at tomorrow in sports history. We're looking at the second day of August in sports history, starting with 1906. The Chicago White Sox beat the Boston Americans, one heck of a name, by the way, 3-0 to start an AL record 19-game win streak. So yesterday, or tomorrow, the White Sox in 1906 started a 19-game win streak. 1907, just a year later, legendary pitcher Walter Johnson at 19 years old begins his 21-year Hall of Fame baseball career, all with the Washington Senators. He's considered one of the greatest pitchers of all time. His first game, a 3-2 loss. Just a fun fact for you. In 1921, after three hours of deliberation, a Chicago jury acquits eight Chicago White Sox accused in the Black Sox scandal. The next day, they were banned from organized baseball for life. Many thought that would ruin the game of baseball, but the great Bambino, Babe Ruth, came along and, in a lot of people's eyes, really saved Major League Baseball. Hard to imagine a world without Major League Baseball today. 1938, the MLB conducts the first test of bright yellow baseballs during a Dodgers Cardinals doubleheader. Can't imagine how a bright yellow baseball during a day game with the sun up would work, but again, I've never tried one. It, maybe you can see it a little bit better because it's brighter. Who knows? Moving on down the list, 1963, the 30th Chicago All Star game. I assume this is a football game. The 30th Chicago College All Star game. The All-Stars, the college All-Stars, beat the Green Bay Packers at Soldier Field in front of a crowd of 65,000 people. The college All-Stars beat the Green Bay Packers 20-17. to Interesting fact considering how good the Green Bay Packers were at that point in the 60s. Moving on down the list, 1982, Oakland A's outfielder Ricky Henderson steals his 100th base of his MLB career. First to steal... 100 bases in the modern era. Moving on down the list, a couple more for you. And I would get, there we go. Sorry, the computer froze up on me. The New Orleans Saints play the first ever preseason game. They lose to the LA Rams 16 to 7. And one more for you. The 1998 Tour de France, Marco. Pantani of Italy wins the first Tour de France for a Italian. And that is your look at sports tomorrow. So impress your friends, impress your coworkers, and know a little bit more about what's going on in the world of sports. All right. We're going to talk some basketball. I guess you can consider this professional basketball. It is a new, relatively new league. It's been around for a couple of years now. It's the Big Three Basketball League, started by Ice Cube. And it is the oldest, I I mean, I guess one-on-one would be the oldest form of basketball in the book, but really the oldest form of pickup basketball games uh, in the country were three-on-three little basketball tournaments. They are still in existence today. And Ice Cube decided he was going to try to take professional basketball players that either couldn't cut it in the NBA or overseas or at the end of their career and start a three-on-three professional basketball league. And it's on all the time. We have it on actually a good bit of time in the studio and seeing the names and everything that are on these teams are really, it's kind of funny. Like watching a game earlier today, I'm watching a game where Mike Bibby and Carlos Boozer are on the same team. 
what, six years ago, seven years ago, that that's an all-star game. Those are two members of the all-star game. So I'm going to bring in a, our, our resident basketball slash NBA expert. Again, I'm a college basketball guy. I'm not a huge NBA guy. Caleb Falero. Caleb, what's Howdy. happening? Oh, nothing much. What What do you think about this league? Because we, um, we sit there and watch it a good bit in here. You know, I don't get too excited like I do for the NBA, but I do like that you can hand check in the th- in the big three league. You know, it's so it's kind of a nostalgic feeling to back whenever the players could actually play defense without little ticky tack foul calls. Well, they don't play defense now anyway. Oh, here we go with this. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to say that. Anyway, I ju- I mean, it's different rules. It's played on a half court. Yep. You have the ability to shoot from a, about two or three feet inside of what a half court mark would be on an NBA basketball court and shoot for a four point basket. Four point play, 30 feet from the basket. You don't see that too often, though. No. I've, I don't think I've seen one of those shots. Taken, I've seen actually. Nate Robinson hit one for a game winner. And it's, it's, and it's totally, it, it seems like backyard rules. It's all right. We're going to play to 50. Yep. At least 25 that's half. One by two. Yeah, win by two. It, it's re- it really is professional pickup basketball. Halftime at twenty five points. It's it's fun structure to the game. It's it is different. And looking at some of the arenas they play in, they're getting more fans than the WNBA. A lot of people show up to those games again because of the talent. Yeah. Again, we watched a game earlier that featured Mike Bibby and Carlos Boozer. Yep. You got some Hall of Famers that either coach or are on those teams. Um, Mahmoud abdul Rauf's on a team. Uh, you got Rashad McCants out there. Some big name people Glenn, out there. Glenn Big Baby Davis. Yeah. Former college stud and won a championship with the Celtics. The game we were watching earlier, the coach was George Gervin. Yeah, I mean, it's... It, I don't ever see this actually taking off and becoming a huge deal, but I think it says something for the game that you can take NBA All-Stars that, I don't want to say are washed up, but are at the end the, of their career. The, the point of their career where they can't play competitively five on five full court basketball anymore. Yeah. And or at least competitive professional basketball. I'm sure Carlos Boozer could still show up at any court he wanted to and run up and down the court. Sure, Nate Robinson could. But at least at the professional level. And it just it, it adds a level because they're still talented. Yeah. Or for the most part. We saw Mike Bibby air ball ball really bad today. Yeah, but, but he's in very good shape. He is in very he's in better <laughs> shape than he was when he was playing. Yeah. <laughs> But I just say it's, it's just, a, I think it's a cool way to kind of keep, it's a way to bring a way of basketball to the spotlight that is one of the most fun ways of playing basketball. I think what's really helping them is it's during the off season of the NBA. That's why so many people are going to those games. It's not just in the off season though. Is it not? They were playing this during the NBA. I think it's once the regular season ends. Gotcha. But because I think I remember watching this when the NBA finals were on. Okay. And in the in the playoffs in se- at several different points around uh, around the playoffs. But I just, it's it's something we haven't really touched on yet. And I just, it, it lasts. I remember when this idea came out and I'm going, there's no way this is going to last. This is going to be the XFL of NBA basketball. And it's succeeded. Yeah. It's been what, three years now? I think this is the second season. Second season. Yeah. So it's still, I mean, it's but again, it's getting a lot of attention. It's getting airtime on TV. You know, you got some comedians down there with the, on the sideline. You, know, you got Michael Rappaport. <laughs> and when's the last time? I mean, we would sit in here and we'd watch three or four games. Or not necessarily watch, but have them on in the background. Yeah. And when's the last time, other than when there's absolutely nothing on, you saw a, a WNBA game on back-to-back nights? Maybe the finals. Maybe. On ESPN, too. Maybe. So I think I think that speaks volumes. Yeah. About how much the WNBA is really just not appreciated around the country, which is no secret. It's also no secret the NBA funds the WNBA. But I just think this is just watching these games. It's again, it's kind of cool just seeing guys that you and I grew up watching and were absolute studs still playing a, a form of basketball that you and I still play on a on a lot of levels. Cause again, it, it, from the time you're starting when you're six years old, you, you play three on three basketball. Mm-hmm. So I think it's, it's, it's something we hadn't brought up on the show. And I just wanted to get your opinion on how you felt about it. Cause I know you're the, you're, you're the big NBA guy. And most of these guys were NBA players at one point or another. 
Thanks for having me on. Not a problem, man. Get back to your, your newsroom. All right, we're going to take a, uh, a short break. When we come back, we'll talk some Redskins training camp football and hear from the latest Redskin to retire, D'Angelo Hall. He officially announced his retirement today at Redskin training camp in Richmond, Virginia. Not really a sad day for D'Angelo Hall, but more of a time to reflect on his impressive college, NFL, and Redskin career. So we'll hear his exit interview, if you will, his his interview that officially announced his retirement along with just talking about training camp and a little bit of what you heard during that NBC sports radio update involving a certain receiver for the Redskins that yet again is injured. We'll be right back with more Miller time after this. The Mountaineer mentality is a special kind of toughness. And the punt's blocked in the end zone, recovered by West Virginia. It never stops fighting. Nearly have him, and they sack him down. Outworks every opponent. And he leaps up, and he makes the catch. Touchdown. And leaves it all on the field. He throws it intercepted. He's going down the sideline. Pick six. Touchdown. Experience the Mountaineer mentality. Order your tickets now at WVUGame.com. We're here at the train heating and air conditioning testing facility to see how unstoppable their products really are. Inside this climate chamber, it's raining incredibly hard on this train AC unit. Clearly, it's hard to stop the train. McRae has served our area for over 80 years. Special financing and rebates up to $1,000 are available now. Go to McRaeWay.com to learn more. McRae and Train. It's hard to stop a train. Really hard. Train, the most reliable heating and cooling brand. Do you hear that? Nothing beats the sound of summer unless it's finding a way to make cleaning your pool easier. Now you can with Pool Life. Our complete line of premium pool care products is the easiest solution under the sun for crystal clear, clean pool fun. Get the most brilliant clean ever seen all summer long with Pool Life. Only at fine pool dealers like John's Pool Supplies. Close to Gold's Gym on Eagle School Road in Martinsburg. Ask about quality PDC hot tubs. Phone 267-2000 or go online at johnspoolsupplies.com. Do you wish you had more time? Are there projects lingering in the back of your mind? Well, help is on the way. Harry Railworks is dedicated to providing builders, contractors, and homeowners in our area with quality custom stairs, handrail installations, tread replacements, custom millwork, and stair parts. Owner Randy Perry has been working in the industry for over 31 years. Perry Railworks products and services are of the highest quality at competitive prices. Call Perry Railworks today at 703-794-0507. PerryRailworks.com. If you're a victim in a motor vehicle wreck or injured due to another person's fault, at Ferretti Law Office, we get to work protecting your rights and getting you the money you need and deserve. The insurance companies handling your claims want a fast and cheap settlement. Before making that mistake, call Ferretti Law Office at 264-8505 to discuss your claim for free. You did not choose to be injured, but your choice of law firms can make a difference. At Ferretti Law Office, we're here to help. Redskins football coming up next on Miller Time. A DUI arrest can have a devastating impact on one's life, your job, your driver's license, and in some cases, your very freedom. My name is Harley Wagner. I own and operate West Virginia's only exclusive DUI defense firm. Since 1999, I've been representing citizens throughout the Eastern Panhandle and state of West Virginia charged with DUI. Let my years of training and experience work for you. The initial consultation is free at the Wagner Law Firm in Martinsburg. Phone 304-901-7400 or online at WestVirginiaDUILawyers.com. The Bainbush is an independent insurance agency. You see, there's an important difference between Smith and Aiden Bush and the agents who work just for one company. Working for one company, they can only sell the products of that company. On the other hand, Smith and Aiden Bush can design a program just for you, your family, or your business, and at the right cost. Smith and Aiden Bush. Martinsburg, Charlestown, and Berkeley Springs. Oh, oh, oh. 
Just about nine minutes left in this Wednesday edition of Miller Time. Matt Crawford here with you in studio. Matt Miller out for the next couple of days with a church event that is taking place in the evenings. But we will be back again next week together live from the Berkeley County Youth Fair all week. So make sure you tune into that. Speaking of the Berkeley County Youth Fair, if you want to call in right now, we're giving away some some free pass, some free one day passes to the Berkeley County Youth Fair. Use them anytime between August 4th and 11th. Each pass will get you in for free for one day. And each pass gets one person. And we're giving away two free right now. If you call in, call Caleb. He'll get you hooked up. Take your name, your information. You can come pick him up at the studio. That's 304 263 6586 or 304 263 6586. Four zero again three zero four two six three six five eight six three zero four two six three six five four zero call and get yourself a couple of free passes to the Berkeley County Youth Fair going on next week. All right, we're going to talk some Redskins football. Some news that became official today out of Redskins Park was that longtime NFL and longtime Redskin cornerback D'Angelo Hall officially announced his retirement. There have been Reports that he had announced that he was going to retire, but nothing had became official yet. And earlier today, he took the microphone at Richmond and officially announced that he is retiring. And these are some of his remarks addressing the media at Redskin training camp and officially announcing that he is retiring from NFL football. So here's the Enzo Hall from Richmond, Virginia. So you probably have heard. I'm sure you heard months ago, but after 14 seasons of professional football, I will be officially retiring um, today. I was joking around a little bit. um, And so I told someone uh, a statement. I was doing an interview for Sports Illustrated, and I said I was always taught, even as a young kid, I came in this league at 20 years old. And I had a room full of veteran guys and no one was intimidated. No one was scared, prideful of me coming in, taking their spot. It was open arms. I was taught every bit of knowledge that I was able to keep passing down along the lines. And I've always said when I retire, it's going to be because I felt like I've taught the guys behind me. I'm getting a little choked up enough to succeed and ultimately take my spot. When I felt like I couldn't make plays or be the same player that I always thought I was, I knew it was, you know, time to go. And, you know, last season, you know, it was a lot of ups and downs for myself personally. Um, Probably didn't start the way I would have liked to on PUP. Didn't really, you know, I can make a lot of excuses. But at the end of the day, um, you know, father time catches up with us all. And so, um, you know, I I made the comment to Sports Illustrated how I – I couldn't understand how a guy like Ben Roethlisberger, who I was in, was in my draft. I'm really good friends with Ben. Still talk to him to this day. Um, how he would feel intimidated by a guy like Mason Rudolph and and make the comment, man, you know, I, I, hope, I hope they don't expect me to, you know, help him. Um, and, you know, I just think it goes back to maybe when he was brought in as a rookie, he did not get that kind of tutelage from the older guys. Maybe those guys were intimidated and felt some kind of way about him. But From the moment I stepped into Atlanta, I never once felt like that. So my whole mindset was always to try to give the young guys as much knowledge and understanding and the lessons that I've learned along the way as possible. And, um, you know, I felt like, you know, like I said earlier, I felt like I I did that. Um, Some by default (laughs) and some by, you know, really, really, really trying to pour into them. And um, that's how I've always tried to play football. Um, as I'm saying this, you know, a couple of people I want to thank along the way, obviously, is, you know, a lot of the coaches I play with. Um, a lot of you guys probably know the stigma of who D'Angelo Hall is or was or um, the hoopla about uh, me being a me guy. And, you know, a, a, a ton of coaches, like I said, along the way, and I, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and name all of them because I'd be here all day, but. I especially want to thank uh, Mike Shanahan for 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 challenging me to be a great player and a great leader. Um, prior to Mike coming here to Washington, you know, all I really cared about was Pro Bowls and making plays. And I knew by making those plays, I would help the team win. And I thought that was enough. And, you know, until Mike sat me down and really challenged me to to be more than just a playmaker, to 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 be a leader. Um, you know, if it wasn't for Mike kind of really opening my eyes to who I could be, I, I probably wouldn't be the person I am today. And so 
special thanks to uh, to Mike Shanahan along with a slew of other guys, um, other coaches. Dan Snyder, obviously, for taking a chance on me. Bruce for keep bringing me back injury after injury when I should have been probably gone a couple years ago. Um, Vinny Serrato and that staff for even taking a chance on me when Oakland cut me. And, you know, midway through the season, people thought that I couldn't play football and thought I did something wrong there when it was really just rest in peace, Al Davis, but it was really just Al being Al. You know, Al marched to the beat of his own drum, as a lot of you guys probably know, who, who've covered sports for a long time. And um, though that was one of the most challenging moments in my career, I wouldn't change a thing because if I wasn't humbled by that experience, I probably wouldn't be standing right here today. And so um, special shout out and thanks to, you know, all those guys, my wife, Jada, my six beautiful kids who I've neglected for years and years and years. And now I finally get to be a taxi driver, Uber driver, whatever you want to say. Um, so I'll kind of wrap that up because I can ramble on all day. Any questions? Uh, if I could have played against Jay Cutler more, I probably would be in the Hall of Fame right now. But thought that was a very fitting way to kind of close out the segment with D'Angelo Hall because I do remember that impressive game where he tied the NFL record for most interceptions in a game against Jay Cutler on the Bears with four. That was back in 2010. Just a, I remember watching that game live thinking that, that this guy was incredible. I'm just flying all over the field. Seemed to be, if it wasn't an interception, he, he was everywhere making deflections, in on tackles. And if I remember correctly, he dropped the fifth interception. So could have been a completely even better story for D'Angelo Hall, but just a phenomenal talent, a phenomenal Redskin, a guy that when he came to the Redskins had a lot of question marks, which you heard him reference when it came to the Raiders and being released in the middle of the year. You, you expect some some distractions and some difficulties with those kind of players, but he is really a Redskin through and through a guy that grew up in Chesapeake, Virginia, a Redskins fan got to play for the team. He grew up rooting for and had himself a pretty impressive NFL career played in 171 games, 636 tackles that were solo 811 total tackles. That's combined assisted tackles and total tackles that were solo ended up with 43 interceptions. He was the quickest guy to 40 interceptions and the quickest guy to 30 interceptions age wise. So just a, a career that was very impressive for Dan So Hall. And at some point I assume he will be in the Redskins ring of honor. And it'll be interesting to see whether he has the stats to ever one day be in the NFL hall of fame. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see where he goes from here and what he does. Other news out of Redskin Park today with just about a minute left in the program. Well, it's something that you, I don't want to say expected to happen, but it's something that has happened every year since he's been in the league. Josh Doxson injured. Did something into his shoulder. They have not officially announced what it is yet. It could be a bruise. It could be an AC sprain, but he left practice, had to get his shoulder examined and I really hope he is not out for any period of time because that is not an injury that the Redskins need yet again. While they have talent in the receiving core, a lot of the talent on the offense was based on the facts and the predictions that he will be back at full health this year because last year definitely took a step in the right direction after being out the majority of his rookie year with an injury. So we'll keep you up to date on that information. All right. That is going to do it for Miller time for today. I'll be back with you solo again tomorrow at five o'clock. So make sure you tune into Miller time tomorrow night. You've been listening to talk radio WRNR Martinsburg and Miller time. Here's your local news from talk radio WRNR. According to a report from Workforce West Virginia, the state's not seasonally adjusted unemployment rate climbed three-tenths of a percent to 5.4 in June. Unemployment rates rose in 47 counties, declined in five counties, and were unchanged in three counties. The highest unemployment rate in the state for June was McDowell at 8.9 percent. Jefferson had the second lowest unemployment rate at 3.7 percent. Berkeley County's unemployment rate was 4.3 percent, while Morgan County's was 4.6 percent. U.S. Attorney Bill Powell announced Gregory Keith Parr, 61 of Martinsburg, was sentenced Tuesday to nine months in prison for a sex offender.